order for the light bulb to light up, we have to see this. We have to see this light bulb lighting up. Uh, electrons must go from one pole to the other pole. Air is not a good conductor of electricity. Air actually is a good insulator, so it's not going to move the electrons from one to the other. So if I plug this conductimeter into the power of wall power now, you see the light bulb is not turning on, even though electrons are in one pole, but since they are not connecting or they are not transforming or transporting into the other pole, it's not lighting up. If we have a media here that is electrolyte, it will move the electrons and the light bulb is going to light up. So the other thing that you need to know in order to record your observation, if the light is a bright light, then the compound is classified as a strong electrolyte. If it's a dim light or weak light, it's going to be called as weak electrolyte. If it doesn't turn on at all, it's non-electrolyte. That's based on the experiment. First item is the this distilled water. So I'm going to place the conductor holes inside the liquid and connect. Okay. Light bulb did not turn on. Water is a molecular compound, so it is expected not to have any conductivity. So it's not a conductor of the of the electricity. Next is going to be I have the um, tap water here. For the tap water that I have here, I'm going to uh, just use this tap water here. Trying to see if it's going to conduct electricity or not. Okay, it does conduct electricity. I don't know if you could see or not. Okay, I'm going to unplug and plug back in. But it's very dim light. That very dim light, meaning that it's very weak electrolyte because it's a tap water. It could have some salt in it from like some salt that is in the from the chlorine or other contaminants that is in the tap water. Um, so tap water is conductor of the electricity, but distilled water is not. Like sea water is conductor of electricity because it has lots of ions, lots of salt in there. The more salt in there, more conductor. Methanol is the next one. Methanol is a organic compound, is a molecular compound. And because it's molecular compound, is not expected, but that's not what we are here for. We are here to experiment, actually. By experiment, we are trying to find out if it's going to be, if it's going to be conductor or not. So the next item is methanol. The light bulb did not turn on, not even a dim light. We call that non-electrolyte for methanol. So methanol, non-electrolyte. Next is aqueous methanol. That means methanol mixed with water. So if I if I mix water with methanol, if methanol were, had dissociating hydrogen, basically it was like a uh, like an acid, um, the hydrogen would separate, generate ions, and then you would see the you would see the light. But methanol does not dissociate to ions in water. Acid, they dissociate in water. But if you don't add water to the acid, it doesn't dissociate, so it doesn't generate iron. So I'm going to repeat one more time. Acids, like glacial acid, when it's glacial acid, that means it's concentrated 100% acid. That, okay, with the glacial acidic acid, you're going to see it's going to conduct electricity or not. So glacial acidic acid, that means pure acidic acid with no water, no ions. So acid do not act as acid unless they are inside the inside the water. So glacial acidic acid, that would be non-electrolyte. Now aqueous acidic acid means that I'm, I have that acidic acid I'm going to add some DI water, I'm going to give enough room for DI water to the acid. When we add 
water to acid. The acid is going to release hydrogen and the acetate ion. So it's expected to have a dimmed light. So you see that dimmed light is created there. So you have that dimmed light. That means weak electrolyte. And why is weak electrolyte? Because acidic acid is a weak acid. Because it's a weak acid, it's going to be weak electrolyte. Even then, it has to be, basically, it has to be in water in order to show those ions. Uh, after the aqueous, then we have sucrose. What to expect from sucrose? Is sucrose electrolyte or non-electrolyte? First of all, it's solid. Even if it was ionic, it would be non-electrolyte because it's solid, solid content. But beside that, sucrose is molecular compound. And since the sucrose is molecular compound, being non-electrolyte, I'm not surprised it is non-electrolyte because it is a molecular compound. It does not have any ions. Next. It would be sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, but solid sodium chloride. Your solid sodium chloride is going to let's see what we have for solid sodium chloride. Can you connect it? No light non-electrolyte because there is no light in there so it's going to be non-electrolyte non because it's solid. Now if we have NaCl in water so basically we take the NaCl place in beaker and we add some DI water. So this is the proof that if your ions exist, the ions are there, but they are not mobile, it's not going to be electrolyte. So your ions must actually be mobile. They should move around. So for sodium chloride, In the uh, aqueous solution of sodium chloride, it gives bright light. That means this is ionic compound that is completely soluble in water. So it generates lots of, uh, lots of uh, light ions that transfer the electrons or the electricity, conducts the electricity, and we get to see that okay. light. So a strong electrolyte for sodium chloride solution. Solid sodium chloride with non-electrolyte. Next one on the list is mercury two chloride. Mercury two chloride. Of mercury 2 chloride, it doesn't generate ions, even if it's, water, if it's added to the water. Because it doesn't generate ions, it's going to be non electrolyte. This was the mercury 2 chloride. So, not electrolyte. Next, HCl. HCl. We organize HCl. What do you expect from HCl? You think it's going to be electrolyte or not? What's the question you have to ask yourself? HCl is hydrochloric acid. Is it a strong acid or weak acid? And if you know HCl is a strong acid, then you can answer the question even before testing. Strong acids are strong electrolyte, and a strong electrolyte gives bright light. So HCl is a strong electrolyte. Strong electrolyte gives a strong and bright light. Next, 
We have NaOH. Sodium hydroxide is also strong. Electrolyte, because sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So if you have sodium hydroxide as a strong base, it's going to give us bright light, which means strong electrolyte. So we are done with that table with list of the substances we want to know if they are electrolyte or not. Uh, we are going to complete the, the data sheet using those. Oh, <laughs>